Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Berni from Bell Canada. I'm a senior technical architect in the uh, Smart Core Technology Strategy Group. And I will be talking about a concept we've been working through with Naviflow around service programming using SRV6. If you look at service chaining, or in the case of segment routing, we call it service programming, there's a few service problem statement that industry has been faced with over the time. We know that real deployable network service composition is hard. From the theory and the, the standardization efforts to the real deployment, it's not something trivial to do on the existing network and even greenfield as we move forward. We still largely rely on ACL or interface-based classification or mechanisms like this. I call them the MacGyver tweaks that we do to be able to try to do traffic steering and classification based on VLAN tags, top, type of service. We do route leaks, policy-based routing. There's a myriad of ways people have done over time. We also see that every SD1 overlay flavor that we are now seeing over a, a coming in the industry have their own version of a chaining magic. Depending on the technology and the overlay mechanism they use, they, they, they create different variations of how to do those kind of service function chains. And it's not that trivial to try to integrate multiple or any of them together. We still deploy our service chains still on, uh, based on linear patterns. We think that an application goes from A to B to C to D, and in reality, based on the patterns, those applications are not this, don't follow the same patterns. We still have not reconciled how we do network versus application awareness. So we do some functionality based on classification in the application without taking care of what the network underneath can be doing. Or we assume that the network is easily programmable or adaptable to the various overlays we create when we do some of those application patterns. We have not yet uh, reconciled the local versus remote or multi-cloud dilemma, meaning I can have a chain that starts in a specific location because it's, it's better to be suited locally, while some services can be done metro or national because of the agglomeration of services that need to be composed. Creating a chain like this is not trivial yet based on our existing networks. And when you start to factor in multi-cloud, it becomes even more complex. In the bottom, I have a diagram explaining the new evolution of how we do networking and the evolution of our telco platform based on edge computing, distribution, and 5G as it goes in. Problem statement number two. We now do service function scaling based on vertical. We do a vertical growth. Theoretically, because they're in the network and the complexity associated to it, we have a tendency to grow those functions vertically. We buy more. We, we, uh, we increase the capability because for some instances, we might need uh, to have a high throughput or specific requirements. So we, we keep growing those boxes without having the capability of horizontally scaling them. A big problem we have also is when we try to do a new network and build new services, how do we reconcile the existing? We have highly cost uh, implemented devices which have been pulled into our networks. It's not really trivial to say that we're going to remove them just because we're trying to do a build, a build a new network. Some of them have long lives ahead of them based on their capabilities, so we'd like to be able to reuse them. We have a tendency right now to do all those services, we call them physically in line. So they are not part of the networking topology. They are just connected as bump in the wires and technologies like this. So they do enter the way we are now building our networks. Equal cost paths, class fabrics. How do we move around orchestrated reconfiguration of those functions? These are things which we cannot do based on those bump in the wire modes. And they are creating some complexity in our network as we try to grow new services or add new services more dynamically. And in a chain of hub by hub explanations like I did in a previous slide, service composition will always be endured by the weakest link in the chain. Meaning, I might have a pattern that needs to go through A to B to C, and maybe only one pattern needs to be, to be treated by the three functions in the chain, but because we have uh, connected them uh, one by one, the only way to be able to do it is that any box in the, in the chain needs to support all of the load of the traffic, and not necessarily only the one which is relevant to him. And as we see now with IoT, the various versions of slicing that are coming up and their growing list of mobility or broadband service patterns that operators and consumers are requesting, those kind of complex compositions are going to be even more prevalent as we go along. If you look just at a mobility traffic pattern before 
the SP Gateway or UPF functionality, we might have features we want to we want to add for security. Then we have various applications that come in in the pattern that we might have different behaviors to it. Some will be default, will go across a few functions and go out. Some others will need to be optimized based on application. And those kind of functions grow and grow and grow. And because of our the growth of new services that are coming up with 5G, uh, newer uh, newer edge computing models, those kind of patterns will grow exponentially. We cannot rely on a basic linear pattern chain and uh, inline model to be able to preserve those because supporting those kind of models would be increasingly exp expensive and complex to support. If you look at a typical network, we go in the traffic patterns, which is we have a fabric and the, all the ops it needs to go to to create a chain is quite complex. This is just the proving as a high level explanation of how we actually to have need to traverse all those ops to create a complex chain of a GI LAN service, for example. This is really not necessarily a latency problem because we have high speed ASICs that can do the forwarding. The trick is more operational effectiveness and visibility of those chains when things start to break including some complexity around making sure that all those functions are easily scalable, horizontally uh, capable of being grown, load balance, and sometimes put out of commission when we need to do an, an update to them or something like this, really operational problems. So if you look at cloud, the way cloud is looking at those capacities, there's new models of doing this. For example, I'm presenting a draft that exists right now around server density, but they have explained that in cloud, you can actually can create chains based on basic plumbing like we would have done in the in uh, physical networks, like virtual wires or layer two connections between functions. They are still now seeing a model which is more interesting to me is a pipeline forwarding model, where you create those kind of virtualized links between those boxes and you, go, you come into the virtual world or the cloud platforms as a, as a physical entry point and you exit out, but in the middle, you stay, in the case of containers, you stay in the user space forum constructs, but uh, you actually have greater linear speed out of this and server density gets increased. The reports prove it quite well. Now, the question I, I'm asking myself is, how can we leverage network programming my, uh, models and new programmable hardwares with P4, NPL, or others to recreate this forwarding pipeline in a more high-speed latency capabilities? We also see the evolution of service control planes. Before, everything was standards, protocols, BGP augmentations, or other kind of high-level constructs or uh, protocols to create those kind of control planes. There's a myriad of them existing, and they're growing uh, at the same speed in the SDOs. But you also see a tendency around more like cloud or SDN-like approach of, around those kind of control planes. You see the disaggregation of controls. You see gRPC being driven, like with GNMI, GNOI, and gRuby, as being a model where you can actually can program and configure from cloud to hardware any, uh, right now with P4 runtime and such. We also see new capabilities with, uh, for example, in the case of this where a network service mesh, when you actually can create a registry of capabilities of all those service endpoints and now be able to construct based on requirements uh, a specific path in the network from physical to cloud. That drove the innovation we're, we're trying to do in, uh, or we tried to achieve with the Tefino team uh, and the Neviflow team was around how can we integrate PNFs and VNFs in a model where we can actually both combine cloud and physical and be able to make those functions virtually in line, but simply reachable. Avoid complexity of orchestration and insane amount of overlays. So for this, we looked at service segment routing v6 and the notion of service programming with all the functions around initially the proxy functions, the m.ad, am, or uh, as for static proxying, dynamic proxying, or masquerading, and we augmented this. We also benefit from this because if I leverage the, the service programming model, which is behind as well the network programming models of SRV6, I can start leveraging BGPT or SRT to create those associated policies in my network. So I can come from a physical world, attach a policy that makes it reachable to the virtual world and or another physical device and, and back and forth without any complex orchestration mechanism. We can leverage BGP control planes, or we can leverage this cloud uh, or new evolution uh, registry systems like Network Service Mesh to create those service registries and create those chains. 
And because of the proxy model available and the capabilities of programmable pipelines like Tofino, we're able to make this available for PNFs or VNFs that are and CNFs if you wanted to, which are SR aware or not. Meaning that I can use my existing devices and I create I can create that still that virtual chain into a network. The beauty of the programmable pipeline is uh, rather than have to do recirculation and recreate a chain per device. I would be. I can create a, an entry in a segment routing forwarding plane uh, using a segment ID from either 128 bit, the standard one, or compressed the used one, and be able to associate that with a forwarding behavior within the ASIC that ties back all those functions, both PNFs, VNS using SROV, or CNFs if they are also using the CRO, uh, C SROV models, and then I can create based on the composition I want a chain which is associated with multiple functions, a single function, and it as a breeze of a Yang model being pushed to a device. And in that network, I can change the chain uh, uh, understanding or the chain behavior in the, the Tafino pipeline or the platform independently of how the network orchestrated. So I can create a policy. That policy will never change in my network if I'm associating with a SID that doesn't change. So that's really quite flexible, less orchestration, and I can ex leverage my existing uh, capabilities. And now, when combined with the underlying capabilities of IPv6 and using SRV6, I can now make all those physical, virtual, or containerized functions attached to the, the, the programmable pipeline available nationwide with ease, without too many complex orchestration overlays, and being able to leverage inherent capabilities of IPv6 to scale, distribute, and make them reachable, meaning I have now a more resilient and easier to compose network to support the growing needs as they are coming in a future years. And with that, I'm leaving you to Jesper from the Innoviflu team, who will be able to go through how they have been ex exposing those capabilities in their product line. Jesper, the ball is yours. Thank you, Daniel, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jesper Eriksson, and I'm the VP of Product Management and one of the co-founders of Noviflow. Noviflow was founded in 2012 by four telecom executives. We're based in Montreal, and our focus is on software-defined networking and scaling cybersecurity. Our core product is an SDN networking operating system software that runs on white box switches. We also build controllers and applications, on top of our NOS to create complete solutions. Our SDN NOS runs on NVIDIA Mellanox network processors and Intel Barefoot Tofino Silicon. Our business is to license and support our software to major carriers, large enterprises, and governments. CyberMapper is a Noviflow solution that provides a number of network services that operators need in their network. It consists of the CyberMapper application and controller that leverages the capabilities of the Noviware NOS running on Barefoot Tofino white box switches. The Threat Intelligence Gateway Service is a way for operators to block certain traffic from getting onto their network. CyberMapper will execute any deny list directly in the Tofino silicon and do so much more efficiently than on an x86. An example of a deny list is the deny list published by the Internet Watch Foundation. The packet broker services include things like filtering, mirroring, and port pairing. The load balancing services are built on top of a sticky and stateless load balancer implemented directly in the Tofino Silicon. It supports proportional load balancing and the ability to dynamically grow or shrink the pool of load balance uh, physical or virtual security services. Networking services include in-band network telemetry for security services, latency performance monitoring, SRV6 routing that allows the security services to be globally addressable and service chained in the SRV6 network, and SRV6 security services proxy that allows the operator to associate one or more security services load balanced by the cyber mapper to an SRV6 segment ID or SID that is then advertised to the network. This slide shows how CyberMapper with SRV6 can be used in a mobile network. Traffic from the left or the mobile subscriber is sent through one or more network services 
in the mobile backhaul before it is forwarded to the mobile core. Traffic from the right or the internet is sent through one or more network services on the GI LAN before it is forwarded to the mobile core. The specific set of network services on the backhaul and GI LAN vary by operator. And CyberMapper is already in production performing load balancing of security services on the backhaul and GI LAN. This is the end of our presentation. Uh, I thank you for watching and I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit Noiflow's website at www.noiflow.com or give us a call. Thank you.